In every stop along my nine city life, a parallel lead lives on. Eight other girls, now women, tread eight paths without pause. Eight different lives unfurl under their feet, complete, unique. And this ninth, how do I know this is the real one? Four-year-old me in Geneva has a recurring anxiety dream. I dream that I'm asleep and dreaming, that I'm asleep and dreaming, that I'm asleep and dreaming, on and on and on and on. In order to wake up, all the dreaming me's have to wake up in sequence, or we will all see what to be. Between one sleeping breath and the next, we will just wake out of existence. Would anybody notice, I wonder one morning, as I brush my teeth with my strawberry-flavored toothbrush, if just once I didn't wake up at the right moment? What if, <coughs> instead of disappearing, I just woke up in some other me's body, in some other me's life? Who would I be? Who was I right now? And how did I know that? I construct myself out of unhelpful explanations, in in-betweens and almost, not quite, actuallys and but also's, repeating the litany of my lives begun, lived, lost, with each and then we moved, another part breaks off. I am not the voice of a people. My inheritance is a tongue split three ways, a bill charged uncontested and paid out each time someone forgets that the facets are made by cuts. I arrive here in the damp. The rain bloats July into a thick icy stew like the sweaty humidity of Islamabad gone rancid. The shock of cold after pre-monsoon torpor, when the air is so heavy everything buckles beneath it. Melbourne stands cold and blue and small, a premature baby of buildings clustering together like a secret. I do not realise then how telling are the little European transplants that line the streets. The cigarette burned shoebox flat with its stained midnight carpet that eats sunshine and vomits someone else's hair lies at the centre of our lives, a greedy black hole devouring any errant light. This year of missed dinners, sore feet, late nights, trams, trains, buses, trams, trains, buses, sits heavily on my shoulders, a great vulture weighing me down with claw and carrion stench as I rebuild my life in the dark. On the tram, tones, tongues, arguments, vocabularies wash over me. A lost old man is offered language after language until his destination is found. The teenagers behind me somersault through broad Arabic and broader Australian. Every way of speaking that I know is understood. At university, though, they offer me pity tut-tutting at the tragedy of my multilingualisms trapped here in Australia, where we speak only English. The smell of jasmine is a haunting. At three, I picked the buds cascading over my neighbor's wall, my grandfather's tremors shaking them from the bushes, my hands bruising them, before my grandmother strung the white gems together for me. On every continent since, those little fragrant flowers have found me. And now, at the other end of the earth, I catch myself on spring days looking at my wrists for garlands. A dark brown woman arms akimbo glares at me from her yellow land against blue sea and sky. You are on Aboriginal land, spelled out in the same blue beneath her. At orientation, each speaker acknowledges the Wurundjeri owners of the land. In class, I learn of disenfranchisement, displacement, stolen children, stolen land, stolen culture, stolen voices, and then of apologies that somehow make it all right to stay. I am a seaside town on an island that I don't remember. I am cities that hold this country's population in one small fist, where the big smoke is choking smog, 
And children, big as car tires, will hustle you in a blink. I am the highest mountains in the world and the most cruel. One city that never sleeps and another that slumbers content under blizzards. I am all of these places and none of them. What does it matter? I am here. Thank you. <laughs>